So in putting this track down here, how am I going to clamp it? Well, I could spread things out and try to use regular clamps, but the beauty of the match fit dovetail clamps is they are flexible. They can move in and move out to where you need them to finally attach to whatever they're going to attach to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, put this track over one of my grooves. Kind of need to have these up. So I'm going to put those clamps down here. Make sure that I'm using my, uh, this way would be my dovetail bit. That's not the direct, the one I want to use. I want to go with my Bosch Colt with the uh, one quarter inch. So I, the beauty here is I can line the track up with the edge, push these uh, clamps in, and hook them up to that workpiece. So this can be longer than my workpiece, but that's all right because my clamps are completely and totally flexible because they can follow that dovetail groove clamp as far as they need to go. All right, so I've got this edge. It's good to have a little room here if you can uh, over the edge so you get your router up against that rail before you start cutting. Let's get it lined up here on this edge. That clamp goes in there. All right, so here's where I'm going to put my one groove probably be good to plug in my router. Now before I plug in my router, let's talk about depth. I want the dovetail, the eventual dovetail groove to be three-eighths of an inch deep into this workpiece. Well this is one-eighth in depth by itself. So to get my eventual dovetail groove three-eighths in the, deep into my workpiece, I need to accommodate this one-eighth. So I want it to be four-eighths. I want it to have be sticking out four-eighths beyond the base. Uh, now, for the first cut with the straight bit, I don't want it to be that far. I only want it to be part of that. I'm going to come back with a dovetail groove and go at the full three-eighths. So in this case, I want this to be about two-eighths or a quarter of an inch into the workpiece, two-thirds of the way. So I need two-eighths plus this one-eighth, so I want to set this to be a plunge depth of three-eighths. That will give me a depth of two-eighths or one-quarter for this preliminary cut. I'm going to do all my preliminary cuts first, obviously. Because then I, well, I'm just going to do all, all of those first. So let's, uh, to set a uh, plunge router to a certain depth, the first thing you're going to do is zero it out. So I, I plunge it down. So I'm going to get the little turret here to where the rod is going to hit the bottom uh, section of the turret. So I'm going to plunge that down. I have this rod loose here. It's going to hit the bottom of that turret. And so that is my zero position. I'm going to tighten this little knob so the, bar, the rod doesn't move. I'm going to put this plastic indicator on zero because this is my zero out position. Then I'm going to loosen this thumb screw. I'm not going to pull up on the plastic. I'm going to pull up on the rod and I want to get this at a height of three-eighths. 
and that will give me a depth of 2 eighths into the workpiece. Then, when you think you've got it, you want to plunge it and see if you, in fact, got it. So, again, I'm looking for 3 eighths. And uh, pretty close. I'm going to go with that. I'm a little bit over, and that's all right. You just put a little bit less strain onto the uh, dovetail when it does its job. So I'm, this is going to go a little bit deeper than 3 eighths. 1 eighth for the track it's running on and two-eighths or one-quarter for the uh, depth into the workpiece. So let's see. Uh, I need my um, dust protection on. A router kicks out a lot of dirt. Uh, I'm also, and sorry about the noise, well, no, I'll leave my air filtration system off. I've got a WEN air filtration up there, and it runs on a remote control. So that I don't lose the remote, I have it uh, using Velcro up here on my door. So I always know where it is. The worst thing about remote controls is finding them. I solve that by having it in one place. Dust mask, hearing protection, eyeglasses, and we'll be ready to go. Alexa, set the timer for 25 minutes. I normally would do all of my quarter inch uh, first because I'm all perfectly set up for that. Uh, but to show you how I would come back and use the dovetail bit, I'm going to go ahead and change this around and do this one cut using the dovetail. And then that will kind of be the end of the video. So uh, I, I had this move a little bit on me, but that's all right because this was secure to this, so it didn't move relative to this piece. Although in the future, I would recommend getting your full workpiece kind of clamped down it so it doesn't surprise you and move on you as well. So let's take these uh, dovetail clamps off here. Once they become engaged, uh, there's, there's a little trick you kind of need to pound on them and loosen them in a little bit. And the other thing that I do is I kind of keep my hard and soft mallet available and uh, just a nice little uh, tap with that helps uh, loosen these up. Well, I'm going to keep them in there because I'm going to use them with the other bit. So now I'm going to turn this around and line it up for my dovetail bit. So this is for my Bosch MR23 EVS dovetail bit. The dovetail bit comes from Microjig. And how do I want to line this up? The, this was a quarter of an inch wide. The dovetail bit you want it to be centered on this exactly. You don't want the left edge of the dovetail bit to be along the left edge. To accomplish that, what I do is I pull this over just like an eighth of an inch or so to the left of this groove. And then that allows me, and I'm going to test it very, very carefully because the real secret here for the double cut of the grooves is to get them perfectly aligned and get that dovetail bit perfectly centered in your preliminary cut. If you don't, you'll find some problems with your dovetail clamps. So 
worth taking the time to make sure you're set up very well. So let's get all the kind of debris out of the way here. And uh, get this aligned just sort of perfectly. Do not super over crank these uh, match fit dovetail clamps. You're talking about them pulling against a, a, a dovetail groove and if you are just trying to prove how strong you are, you will in fact be able to exert such pressure that you'll be able to break the dovetail groove and you, obviously you don't want to do that. This is not a strength test. This is a precision work, woodworking technique. So don't break, don't, don't lose your brain and, and think about tightening that down super, super tight. Uh, it will hold and you just don't need to overdo it. So I feel like I've got that pretty well. This one's a little bigger than that one down there. I think this one's all right. This one that needs a little bit more. We want this dovetail groove to be three eighths deep into our workpiece, but I'm going to run my router base on top of this track. Well, that's one eighth in depth as well. So I need it to plunge three eighths plus one eighth or four eighths or one half. So I'm going to set this up to plunge one half. Let's raise it up. It's unplugged, folks. Always unplug when you're doing all this fooling around. Let's raise it up, plunge it to zero, make sure this bar is all the way down, set the plastic, lock the bar in place, set the plastic at zero. If your eyes are better than mine, you'd probably have more success. All right, now loosen this, raise the bar a half of an inch. Now the plastic should be over a half inch. Lock that down so it doesn't move on you. Now test your plunge. Now I've plunged that all the way down. Then let's check the height. So I got it at one half of an inch. Bring her up. Get her plugged in. Think about in your mind what your push is going to be like, whether or not you've got everything clamped up that you want to clamp up, whether or not you stepped on your electrical cord too many times and the prongs are out of alignment. Okay, so that's uh, plugged in. I'm going to get a clamp and kind of get my uh, workpiece secured to my saw stands. I have my track very securely hooked up to my workpiece. I just want to keep the uh, workpiece from sliding around. So nice little clamp right there. Let's uh, turn it around. Make sure you think about whether or not your cord's going to be restricted. I love these for a lot of reasons. Uh, I'm going to plunge this down here. Yes, I'm not going to unplug it. I'm going to be careful to keep my hand off the trigger. To check the height, you can use another little handy device. This is a little uh, Capri uh, depth setter that my son bought me. And uh, you get that in inches and zero it out and then drop it down on the top of that bit and then get a reading and it says one half of an inch. So that gives me some pretty good confidence in addition to the fact that I measured it that I am now set at one half of an inch. Now it's very critical that I get this bit centered on that dovetail groove. I'm not going to stick my hand down in there because I'm plugged in, but 
I want to see that I've got about the same amount of overlap on both sides of the dovetail bit, which I feel comfortable that I do. So now I'm going to go ahead and do my cut. What do I do before I do that? I get on my dusk mask. All right, let's take a look at that. Uh, we did the preliminary cut with a one quarter inch up cut bit. We did the uh, second cut with the dovetail bit. So let's test it all out before we go using the same procedure in about 30 different grooves that are, we're going to put in these sauce stallions. I find that uh, this gets compacted down in here, so it's usually good to have a little screwdriver to kind of loosen that all up. And then a little shop vac. You'll probably find that to be uh, very, very good just as it is. But anytime you cut anything, you're leaving some little uh, fiber edges, and that's certainly true for a dovetail groove. So I like to take just a uh, little file, and again, my groove here is sloping down. I don't want to take that away, so I put my file at an angle, and then I just kind of get rid of these rough edges. I will usually do all of this at the end when I've cut all my grooves, but now let's get a little sanding. It's the final test. Let's see if it works. Now, you can do this, which didn't cost me anything. I do have to build up a supply of these match fit dovetail grooves, but I can use them in all sorts of jigs and all sorts of things. But, uh, or you can buy tracks, you know, what would that be? 30, 35 dollars, 18 dollars. I can put as many grooves as I like for no money. So I've got a really nice clean groove here. And things are holding and uh, gonna work very well. Just a secret, when you have these match fit dovetail grooves and you wanna push forward, Lean this rod back so that the tip comes up. All right, so we got a beautiful groove there. That is how you put match fit dovetail grooves into work pieces and jigs to make your workshop super effective.